Welcome to Walking Through the Word. I am Josiah Espinoza. Today we will continue our study of the exegesis of John chapter 6, starting at verse 41. So if you have your Bibles with you, open them with me as we read the Word together. Last time we left off with Jesus uh, describing Himself as the bread of life that comes down from heaven, that He was the true bread. As He says in verse 35, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. And so, Jesus describes himself not only as the bread that comes down from heaven, but as the Son of Man who gives uh, this eternal bread, this life-giving bread, to all those who will come to him, for God has set his seal upon him. And the setting of the seal is God's authority, his divine authority, given over to Jesus, Jesus is the one who gives everlasting life to all who come. The more literal translation of verse 35 would be, um, I am the bread of life. Everyone coming to me shall not hunger, and everyone believing in me shall never thirst. And so if you are coming to Jesus, and if you are believing in Jesus, you shall never go hungry and you shall never thirst. And last time we left off talking about how the Jews still did not believe, even though Jesus was out of his very mouth describing himself as the bread of life, as the one way by which we are to receive eternal life. He's describing himself as this eternal life-giving bread to the Jews. And the Jews ask of him, they say, Sir, give us this bread always. In verse 34, they said, Give us this bread. We want this bread. And Jesus says, I am the bread. And he says in verse 36, But I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. This is the nature of man. This is the nature of fallen, depraved man. Men who are dead in their sins, men who have um, no spiritual life in them, even though they hear the words of God, even though they hear the testimony of Jesus directly from Scripture, the very words of Christ about who He is and about what He does, in accordance to the will of the Father, um, people won't accept. They won't believe. And Jesus knows this. And he goes on to explain to them why he doesn't believe in verse 37. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never cast out. So Jesus tells them who he is. They're not believing, and then he explains to them why they don't believe. This was in our last segment, so if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, you can go back and and. And listen to verses, um, I believe it was 21 uh, from verse, excuse me, 22 all the way through verse 40, where I exegetically expound upon what Jesus has to say about himself and about the life-giving bread he has. So as we continue on in chapter 6, verse 41, so the Jews grumbled about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. So in hearing what Jesus has to say about himself, about how he is the bread of life and that all that come to him is because the Father has given them to the Son and anyone who comes to Jesus, that is everyone coming to him, are those who are given to him by the Father and no, nobody will be taken or ripped away. Um, if anything, the Bible says that he will raise us on the last day because He has we have been given to the Son. And so... By hearing this, the Jews grumbled about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. In verse 42, they said, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How does he now say, I have come down from heaven? This is the natural reaction of sinful man. They don't believe the words of Jesus. Unless the Spirit, by its freedom in blowing life as it pleases, as it says in John chapter 3, as the spirit blows life, so it is with, or as the, as the wind blows, so it is that everyone that is born of the spirit. If the spirit does not open your mind and does not regenerate your heart and does, does not bring you to spiritual life by its own free will, you will always reject the words of Christ. This is the nature of fallen, depraved, wicked man. That's what Romans chapter 8 verses 5 through 8 talk about. The mind that is set on the flesh cannot please God. So if the mind that is set on the flesh cannot please God, then it cannot um, heed the words of God because it's sinful by nature. 
and it doesn't want to do anything with the spiritual things because spiritual things are discerned by spiritual people and the natural man cannot it cannot discern the spiritual things so it is a work of the spirit to bring that person to spiritual life and so the people are grumbling they say hey man don't don't we know these this guy's parents i mean aren't they living among us don't we know who they are and listen to what jesus says do not in verse 43 do not grumble amongst yourselves no one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws him and i will raise him up on the last day this is a parallel text uh, to verse uh, 37 all that the father gives me will come to me and whoever comes i will never cast out and now he says no one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws him and i will raise him up on the last day so jesus is again he's reiterating what he just told them the reason that you don't believe my words, the reason that you're grumbling amongst yourself is because the Father has to draw you to me. Now, pay attention because a lot of people will say, well, everybody is drawn by the word. Everybody it can either re choose to accept it or choose to believe it when they hear the word and they're just choosing to believe it. But in context, in context of the entirety of John chapter 6, all that the Father gives me will come to me and you cannot come unless the father draws you so if you're not given by the father to the son if you are not drawn by the father to be given to the son then you can't come to the son and you say well then how do i come to the son and the answer is only by the grace of the father only if the father chooses to draw you and you say well that's not fair I want to be drawn, or I want to be chosen, or I want to be the one who comes. Well, here's the thing. If you're dead in your sin, you won't want to come. You won't want to be drawn. You don't care about the gospel. And if you do want to be drawn, and if you do want to be given by the Father to the Son, then the Father is already giving you and drawing you to the Son. It is an act of the Father to draw you and to give you to the Son. And when He does that, your heart becomes broken and softened before Him so that you want to be given and drawn to the Son. And notice, I will raise Him up on the last days. It's the same thing that He says in uh, verse 39. And this is the will of Him who sent me, that I should lose none of all that He has given me, but raise it up on the last day. So the same people that the Father is giving to the Son, the same people that the Son is raising up on the last day, are the same people that the Father draws to the Son, and it's the same people that are being risen up by the Son on the last day. Verse uh, 45, It is written in the prophets, and they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except he who is from God, he has seen the Father. So, what Jesus is just saying right now is that in the Old Testament, in the prophets, the, the scriptures prophesy of one that will come, and his, the one that is teaching will be equivalent to that of the teachings of God. It will be the same thing as an individual being taught by God. Now, I'm a teacher of the word. But I would never, ever claim myself to be one who teaches in the equivalent nature of God. Never. I would never, ever say that about myself. I would never say, hey, when you get taught by me, you're being taught by God. I would say, however, that as I am teaching the word, as I am e explaining the word to you and interpreting the word, that God can then speak to you by his word not by any new teachings that i have but simply by what god has already taught me to be able to give to somebody to you who are listening but i would never ever make myself equivalent to that of the teachings of god nor of the teachings of christ but jesus says this it is written in the prophets in verse 45 and they will be taught by god not just by the written scriptures or by an interpretation of the scriptures but what jesus is saying that the very words that he is speaking 
are the very teachings of God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. So what he's saying is, and later on we're going to see this in John chapter 10 when he starts to talk about how he, he, uh, that the sheep listen to the voice of the shepherd and they do not follow a stranger's voice. I think this is kind of a parallel topic is that everyone who has heard from the Father, that is everyone who is hearing the very teachings of the Father comes to Jesus because Jesus' teachings are equivalent to the Father's teachings. That's what he means by saying that they will be taught by God. And it goes on to say in verse 46, Not that anyone has seen the Father, except he who is from God. So, the, what he's saying is, the reason that they come to me is because they've heard the teachings of the Father. Not that anyone has seen the Father. Nobody has seen the Father. Um, the Bible talks about how anybody who would even try to look upon the face of God would uh, fall dead. Just as it says in um, Exodus chapter 33, when Moses asks to see uh, the glory of God or the face of God, God responds to him and says, You cannot see my face, for man shall not see me and live. And so what Jesus is trying to explain to them is the very teachings of Jesus are equivalent to that of the Father. And they come to Jesus not because they have seen God, because no one has seen God, except he who comes from God. He has seen the Father. The one who comes from God is the one who has seen the Father, that is, Jesus has come down from heaven. This is part of the reason why they were grumbling. But the one who comes to Jesus is the one who is listening to the words of the very mouth of Jesus, who is teaching in the equivalent power and nature of the Father. The reason they come and they believe in the teaching of Jesus is because the Father has given them to the Son. The Father has drawn them to the Son. In verse 47 it says, Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. Again, does this mean that anybody out of the whole world by their own free will and free choice, their own autonomous decision um, can believe? Well, no, the Bible teaches that God is the one who draws. God is the one who gives. And when He gives you you to, to, to the Son, you will come to the Son. You will believe in the Son. But the incredible thing is, Jesus is explaining this to them, and then at the very same time, He tells them, Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. So there's a general proclamation going out to the whole crowd who are listening to the words of Jesus. A general proclamation, and yet... The Father is going to ultimately be the one who draws His people to the Son. As it goes on to say um, in verse 48, I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that comes down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. And again, this the word world here, does it mean the whole world to include every single person who's ever existed and whoever will exist? In the context of, of the entire passage, no. The world here does not mean everybody who ever existed. Now we can talk about, and there I think there's room for conversation about, the um, the power of the death of Christ, meaning if God so chose and if he planned to and if he wanted to in a theoretical way, if he wanted to save the entire world by the death of Christ, well, the death of Christ would be sufficient enough to do that. But the problem, or not the problem, but the case is that God in his infinite plan and his predestined purpose, um, he did not choose to do it this way. He did not choose to save the whole world, because we know that the whole world is not going to get saved. But he did send his son in order that those whom the Father gives to the Son will come, and those whom the Father draws will come, 
and that the Son will lose none of them because the work of the cross of Christ is perfect and it is complete. He substitutionarily atoned for all that would come to him because all that would come to him are those who are given by the Father, that is the elect. And I know this is a very difficult topic to hear. It might be hard to swallow, but I pray that you would con- that you would uh, go back and read these these passages, read the entire book of John, and just listen to the consistent testimony of Jesus when it comes to dying for a specific people, when it comes to drawing a specific people, when it comes to the freedom of salvation only given to the Father and not to man. God alone has the power to save. God alone is the one who saves. God alone is the one who freely chooses for himself a people, not based on what they have done or what they have said or what they will do, but based solely on the free choice and purposes and glory of God. And when he chooses for himself a people, he does it out of love. He does it according to his perfect will and according to his perfect purposes. As Ephesians chapter 1, in love he predestined us for adoption. And that's the testimony of the scriptures. God has always lovingly chosen a specific people or a specific person by which he will manifest his glory to the rest of his creation. And so I I just pray that you would uh, heed these words, that you would go back, read them for yourself. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. You don't have to agree with me. That's fine. Leave me questions. Leave me comments. And I'll try to address them as much as I can in my next video segment or my next audio segment. May the Lord richly bless you, keep you always in His loving embrace. God bless.